The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this very informative webcast on precision bottom fishing for explosive profits. I'm so delighted that so many of you have taken out some quality time, I'm going to say in this case, to take in this webcast. I think it's really a, potentially anyway, for if you if you get serious about this, it can be a life-changing event. It really can. I mean that uh, sincerely. There's an awful lot of webcasts out there these days that have an awful lot of impact, but this is potentially a life-changer. So uh, let's get to it. Yeah, I think that's about the best way you can start it off. So yeah. If there's one thing I want you to understand right out of the gate, it's it's this, it's that your system is is going to determine your success. And what we've got to learn to do is that we've got to learn to not be fearful of market corrections, which I all hope we know and understand. We've been in largely a, uh, a market correction since, uh, well, the culmination of the bull market rally of 2009 all the way up until uh, 2022. And what... It, what it does is if you have a precise system to time things appropriately, you can really experience a life-changing event. You can get the explosive profit potential uh, that we mentioned on this slide. So that's what this is all going to be focused about, is showing you how to achieve uh, incredible results. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to do that. The, the main thing to understand is that in order to make this a reality, you know, it is truly going to require a big shift mentally. Um, many of us, you know, have established ourselves as money makers through the VectorVest system over the years in doing in doing it the VectorVest way, which is buying safe, undervalued stocks, rising in price and rising markets, right? Well, the paradigm shift here is quite big from that perspective in that we're going to be doing things quite differently, uh, but we're only going to do that on a situational basis when a bottom fishing opportunity uh, comes into view. And so when we talk about the paradigm shift, um, you know, that's the biggest part. Now, my promise to you guys is that if you stick around here, you're going to learn all the skills necessary. You're going you're to acquire them to nail market bottoms with precision so that you'll never miss another explosive bottom fishing opportunity ever again. It's a big claim, isn't it? Well, let's see if we can deliver. So real quickly here first, uh, my name is Steve Chappell. I'm the Director of Trading Systems Development here at VectorVest. And I've been with the company now for more than 20 years. Uh, it's been quite a journey. And uh, one of the things that I take a lot of pride in is the subject matter that we're going to be talking about today because I started teaching this with Dr. Delito himself literally 20 years ago. Uh, it was one of the very first subjects uh, that I ever taught on a big stage, uh, one of the big money shows. And it was an awful lot of fun. So I'm just a small part of a very highly skilled team of people here at VectorVest. We all take pride in delivering the best stock market guidance we can get uh, anywhere at any price. And so hopefully today will be no exception. All right, let's talk a little bit about our journey today. Our journey today is number one, showing you the system I should say we use uh, to make precise market entries at market bottoms because it is more than just I at this stage. I mean, it's uh, anybody who's come across this content. Uh, there are people that you will talk to at VectorVest events and things when you, the subject comes up and they will echo a lot of the things that you heard from me earlier on, which was, you know, this can be a life-changing opportunity at times. You know, there's been over 40 market bottoms 
of various sizes and degrees over the past 20 years uh, that I've participated in. There's really only been what I would call, quote unquote, buying opportunities of a lifetime a couple of times. But I do see the potential for another buying opportunity of a lifetime around the corner. Uh, and, you know, we're not going to commit to when that's going to be uh, in this webcast because nobody knows. Uh, there's always a, a, a sh earth shattering event that occurs we call a catalyst uh, that sparks those rallies. For example, in the midst of doom and gloom and financial crisis, it was Citigroup, you know, that turned a profit in the first quarter of 2009 that sparked the bull market that has largely been in place all the way up until now. Right. And so another one of those catalysts is around the corner. Nobody knows what it is. It often comes from places you least expect. <laughs> and so what we do know is a precise way of getting ready for that catalyst to show itself. And then when it does, how to take advantage of it and do it mechanically and reliably. Uh, but, you know, there are always good bottom fishing opportunities, even on the shorter term uh, from the same kind of setup. And so we're going to be talking all about that. Okay. Uh, number two, we're going to discuss the key attributes to pick the best stocks at the right time because it's not going to be the traditional approach of safe, undervalued stocks rising in price. Uh, we're going to be literally buying stocks as they have fallen down the page and trying to avoid that catching the falling knife scenario. And we're going to do that with a couple of very useful indicators in VectorVest to get the job done. And then finally, uh, we're going to look at trading tactics that take all of this to even another level in that uh, it's really the management that will take what is already a good uh, grassroots system and push it over the edge with even better results. So uh, yeah, it's very defined. We've been teaching it the same way uh, over the past 20 years and uh, actually added to it, I guess I would say over the 20 years, but have largely been teaching this the way you're going to see here today uh, for a long while now. All right. So before we get really cooking, let's get the creative thoughts and juices flowing here. What's the hardest part of nailing a bottom for you guys? So enough about us and enough about me. What's the hardest part of nailing a market bottom for you guys? And so I'll take a quick sip of drink and let you guys type a couple things in and then we'll, we'll talk about them. Oh, wow. I took a look at the meter again. It's so great to see so many folks here. This is terrific. All right. A couple of things have come in and usually they all funnel in one way or another to a common ground. And that is not buying too soon, <laughs> right? The bottoming for the whole bottoming part. I think I just saw somebody put it. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. I mean, and, and if you don't have the kind of tools that VectorVest has at its disposal, it, 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 it makes the job incredibly more difficult. So uh, we're going to show you that in fact, it can be made rather simple if you combine all the right elements at the right time and and you know you'll be able to do that okay so let's get to it uh let's get back on the subject of the paradigm shift we'll just elaborate a little bit more some folks are more uh, right brain centered and need some visuals and so what we'll be talking about is going from buying stocks like these which is your classic approach and always a good system for uh earning consistent profits in the stock market month in, month out, year in, year out, is to buy stocks that are already doing that. You know, they're the ones that are walking up the page, bottom left to top right, and it's because the indicator on the bottom. That's your forward earnings uh, on where not only earnings have been, but where they're heading, right? And so that's the engine that drives stock prices higher. And so normally as a VectorVest subscriber, this is precisely the kind of thing we look for. Stocks that are walking up the page that have the earnings support and future growth to keep that truck in motion, to keep it climbing, okay? What we're gonna be doing here is quite the opposite. We're gonna be looking for, as Warren Buffett has always said it best, we'd be looking for blood in the streets. Uh, but we're gonna be doing that carefully. So we're not simply just gonna look for the bloodiest stocks. We are gonna look for bloody stocks that have some value to them. And so we're gonna use again, a couple of indicators to really leverage that because when you do, instead of getting ordinary stock market returns or I guess at VectorVest, we'd have to stay still extraordinary, right? Uh, we often, you should be beating market performance if you're a tried and true VectorVest subscriber. But this little stock, I mean, if you're not looking at the, at the legends, if you're not looking at the scaling rather, 
Uh, this is up a thousand percent off of at the time the screenshot was taken, which was only nine months uh, off of the actual low, it was up a thousand percent over that time frame. Okay, from under five dollars to over fifty. And so these are the kind of things that we're going to be looking for. Now, I'm not going to say that you're going to capture a thousand percent gains on your trades, but what you have though is uh, an extreme likelihood to not only make money but to get double or triple digit returns on a lot of your trading when you get this right. Okay. Uh, so timing is going to be critical. Timing is everything. And it's not going to be as simple as, hey, let's just put a stochastics indicator on a market, you know, like trying to time the NASDAQ with stochastics. I'm sure a lot of folks have run across. This is why people are fearful of trying to buy bottoms because, you know, false signals from time to time uh, do occur if all you're doing is isolating price and trying to make decisions solely on that. It's true that it was oversold. It's also true that it did bounce, but was it a market bottom? You know, no. So uh, you can't use that in isolation. I mean, look, I've been technical analyst literally almost my whole career here at VectorVest at this point. I really enjoy technical analysis. I realize the value of uh, modifying time frames, making things more appropriate and all of that. But even if you do all of that, it's not enough. Okay. And so then you know it goes into the i can't be wrong and it'll come back and all that stuff so the, the whole problem here is there's something missing it's not just that the timing is off it's that there's something missing it's incomplete and so that's the real problem you know we need a more complete system than that and it's not as easy as like adding volume <laughs> that's that's not what we're talking about uh you need market breadth indicators you need more than that okay so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fix and the fix is actually quite simple. We are going to elaborate it on a little bit because, you know, um, we want you to try to fully understand this as best you can with as little time as we have, realizing there's always more to learn at some stage, right? Uh, but on, on terms of the fix, your system is going to determine your success. So let's talk about the right system. We want it to keep it simple, uh, and it is. And so we're going to draw it out. I've read a lot of good books in my day. One that comes to mind when I start drawing triangles is Trading for a Living by Dr. Alexander Elder. You know, he, he often uses the analogy of a three-legged stool uh, and, and, and talks about the same kinds of things that we're going to talk about here because these are the three pivotal things that everybody needs to address. And if you, you do, you're missing one of those legs of the stool, right, the stool is likely to do what while you're sitting on it? <laughs> you're likely to have a fall, right? So... Uh, what we need are going to be three things. One, we need the ability to know when to buy, when to launch the campaign. So we're going to be buying baskets of stocks here. Okay. Uh, and when we do, what are we going to buy? Uh, naturally becomes the next part of the equation. And then how are we going to manage them? Right. So that's your three prong approach here. We are going to keep it simple in each category. But when we talk about when to buy, we're talking about precision. So not just good indications but precise indications uh, that a market bottom are truly in play so and we were we are going to show it uh, we give away a lot in this webcast to be honest um, you're going to get a lot of value here uh, so number two stocks with explosive up, upside potential if you know vector vest really well you probably already know just by that definition uh, what types of indicators we're going to be featuring okay and then number three we're gonna cut losers quickly and let winners run. Uh, now, when we say cut them quickly, I don't want that to be uh, too confusing here. We're not actually gonna carry a tight stop out of the gate, but, but these stocks are gonna be volatile by nature of the timing uh, and you know, kind of the, uh, the capitulation that occurs around the turning points. So we're actually gonna carry some fairly loose stops initially that do get looser, but then tighten up as you get closer to um, really strong profits. So fairly loose stops. We'll talk more about that when we get there, because there's some ways to deal with that without putting too much uh, money at risk in any individual trade. We are going to account for that. Okay. All right. So on the subject of when to buy, let's dial in. Let's really dig into it here a little bit. So what we mean uh, in terms of getting it right is we are always in search of what we term the blast off day. Um, and the blast off day is usually a result of that catalyst, right? So back in 2020, it was the Fed announcing that we're going to put trillions of dollars to work uh, into the stock market, right? And, uh, you know, that propelled us largely all the way up into 2022 and, 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 
even, I guess you might say, where we are now uh, to some degree, right? Uh, the frustration, of course, is when people try to do this, again, they can get in a little early or a little late. And so if you want to, if you know, the, the nice thing about waiting for, for, for a lot of confirmation is you're more sure and you're often more right. You know, you might see us like the Dow take out a prior swing level of, of resistance from the recent past or something and say, well, here we go. Now we're seeing the emergence of uptrend. The problem with that is you're giving away all of the real explosive profit potential, because if you look just at the candle heights on this chart prior to the arrow and then the heights of the candles afterward, what you find out quickly when you start really studying this stuff is most of your movement is actually front loaded in the first several days, then the first several weeks. And then, you know, it's kind of a deteriorating rate of return, the higher up off the lows, the market goes. Okay. So we will illustrate that as a matter of fact. And so we need to get precise. We need to try to time it within the first day to couple of days of that market low and, uh, and take action. That's where the money is. So, when we talk about the missing piece, we need the precise indicators to do that, to know when to be looking for the blast off day that's going to have a high likelihood to get us where we want to go, which is a market that's going to go up for days to weeks to hopefully years if it's the big one, right? Uh, so here are, oops, just a few signals from recent past. Um, had to go back to kind of a bull market situation. Even the start of the, the start of the next bull market, you know, is, is going to be the best one, right? And then they get a little less uh, impactful uh, as you go from there. So the 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 real big money is going to be on the next one, guys. I can't emphasize that enough. So you're in the right place at the right time. Uh, but if we just take the COVID collapse, kind of a black swan event, I think we could all agree on that. Nobody really saw that coming. Although in VectorVest, we were already cautioning, we were seeing some. Uh, things that we you know, were concerned with prior to the big event, but kind of a black swan event, took markets off guard. They came way, way down. Uh, we're talking about buying as it took off and avoiding all the capitulation in between, largely because the indicators that we used. Uh, and then in, a, in November of 2020, there was another great opportunity that really ran up until about February. It was about the third week in February, I think, when all of the growth stocks that I had <laughs> that were up, <laughs> geez, ridiculous percentages uh, started to come back down in a pretty big way, right? And then uh, while you can't see it on this graph, the growth stocks kept going down, certain parts of the market kept elevating and going higher, but you can see the chug of the market eventually turned over uh, late 2021 and 2022, right? So we wanna try to position ourselves on these blast offs because that's where the money is. All right, so when we get it right, even if we buy a classic stock like an Apple, this, uh, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to nail the turning points. The market is a representation of all the stocks, right? And so, it, that, but that's just, you know, Apple is a kind of a go-to for everyone. It's going to help in situations like that, but it gets better than that. Uh, and so what we want to do is help you make this shift from uncertainty to precision. So I'm going to try to do that now to as much of a degree as I can do in a one hour webcast. There's always more, right? But if I come up here to the top, I'm gonna to go to timing and then market timing graph. We'll pull it up and we'll get to work. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here a little bit. And as I do here again on your screen, I think everybody here is a VectorVest subscriber, but just in case you're not, uh, this market timing graph, the, the candle pattern you see here is a representation of the stock market movement over at this point, the last 10 years and five months, okay? And so I just, zoomed it out to a big enough picture where we can see the ebbs and flows of the market. What we need to be able to do is try to nail these lows. Okay. Because what comes on the back side of those lows is this explosiveness, right? And so what we need is an approach that can help us nail this explosive day right here with a great deal of precision. Okay. So this is back in, this is good. This is back um, uh, after the prior election where the markets took off. Okay. And so why would we have already been on the lookout for a potential catalyst? And uh, I did not mean to go precisely to this one. That just happened, guys. I'm not going down to a political spectrum if anybody's worried. That's not happening here, okay? 
But what we can do is say, hey, we should have been on the lookout here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on a couple of things. I'm going to put on the primary wave, number one. Over here on the right, what I'm going to do is add, it should have already been there, the MTI layout. Because this adds the all the benefit of our market timing indicators here, right? So when market when markets come down enough, We're only focusing on these green arrows, by the way, at this point. But when markets come down enough to where the M, the buy to sell ratio, this is the one thing that has to happen, okay? For the buy to sell ratio to go to about 0.2 on the scaling. You can see here, <laughs> I don't want to say good enough for government work. That's a terrible expression again. <laughs> but, you know, when you get down to that 0.2 zone, right? There's always going to be that edge case. This happens to be it where it got to 0.21, you know, and markets took off. So when, as you approach that zone of 0.2, you start looking, okay, for, for a bottom fishing opportunity. We say we classify that when you're at or below 0.2, you're searching for a bottom. So at 0.21, what are you doing? I mean, you know, <laughs> you're searching for a bottom, okay? Uh, should it show itself the next day anyway, you should be on high alert that, you know, you're going to be looking anyway. All right. So, the MTI is nice to have. So the MTI is also on a, is on a zero to two scale in this case, not also, but it is on a zero to two scale. Uh, anytime it gets down to around the 0.6 or below level, we say you can have an even better bottom. You know, it's, it's almost like it's the rubber band analogy, really. Uh, that deals with underlying trend, okay? So the buy to sell ratio, that deals with stock, stock composition. And what I mean by that is there's some fundamental analysis in the stock composition. At VectorVest, when we put a buy, sell, or a hold rating on a stock, well, when we talk about buy, typically those stocks have to have at least some fundamental quality to them, okay, for them to earn that buy recommendation. So for the buy to sell ratio indicator to get on the move, you know, uh, you're seeing some, some stocks of reasonable quality that are... Um, generally participating from that perspective and then when you have the mti that's dealing with underlying trend and so uh, you know the deeper the trough the larger the explosion on the back side uh, for example back in 2009 that indicator was at like 0.34 and this particular one here in 2016 that indicator is only at 0.63 because the trough is not so great you know prices didn't come down like they did in 2008, 2009. So as that relates to today, you know, you're seeing some pretty low readings uh, at times with these indicators because of how big the underlying trend has been down. All right. But all this to say, on the, uh, as we're coming down here, are we approaching 0.2 on the buy to sell ratio? And we actually get there, by the way, on the prior day, you see that 0.2 or below, right? Are we at 0.2 or below? Yes. Check. Okay. Are we at 0.21 and starting to look anyway? Check, okay, <laughs> right? And then are we at 0.26 and start to get on, you know, yeah, you wanna start getting ready as you see it getting and approaching to that zone. You also have to realize that when the buy to sell ratio gets to this zone, it can stay there for a while. I've seen it stay there for as long as 43 trading days. If I remember my, um, uh, my look back at that correctly. I know it was in the 40s for sure. Uh, so it can stay down there for many, many, many market days. Okay, so that's more than just like a month and two weeks. That's more like a couple of months, okay? Uh, it can stay down there. So you can't just react to that alone. Again, we're waiting for that explosiveness and the catalyst, hopefully, that's providing the explosion. And so in this case, it happened to be an election, right? And uh, so markets, if you look cl closely, and let me zoom in here a little bit, this is textbook. This is what you want to see. Uh, you want to see a market that not only has a big day, right, but explodes even before the market opens up. So it's already heading in a big way. So like if I think back to the March 9 market bottom, and I think about March 10th, uh, I think about where I turned on the TV before I came into work and I said, I got to go to work quick because, you know, the the Russell was up 6% in the pre-market. The S&P was up 5% in the pre-market. The, the Dow was up 4% in the pre-market. Those are actual percentages that day. So 
<laughs> it was like 500 points on the Dow back then, but the Dow <laughs> was a lot lower than it is now, you know, that was a huge move. Okay. And so those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Uh, we've got more explicit details um, that we can share and I'll teach you how you can learn about that a little bit later, but that's really the spirit. The spirit of it is what matters the most. So when these indicators get down to these levels, we're looking for that explosiveness and it should be abnormally explosive. And typically then you, you're looking for the catalyst, like a city group announcement or a, a, a presidential election or a, a abundance of fiscal stimulus like nobody has ever seen before. You know, those kinds of things are traditionally what mark market bottoms. They always have and they always will. Okay. And it's usually unforeseen. It's usually when you, so I know some of you are saying, well, it can't happen right now. Well, that's usually, that's when it does happen is when you almost have lost all hope is, is usually when it happens. You know, I'm not saying it's happening tomorrow, guys. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I'm with you. But, uh, you know, it will happen when you least expect it. That's also true. Okay. Now, those kinds of those kinds of opportunities are fewer and further between. However, if we just kind of take a look at data here, so this is 2018, okay? Uh, buy sell ratio at point two or below, check. MTI approaching point six for an even potential better bottom, check, right? And uh, so that's not a requirement, by the way. Again, buy sell ratio is the only requirement, 0.2 or below. Explosive day the next day, check. It was a nicely higher open, right? This one only ran for a couple of weeks. Maybe you hung around for this next one, but I doubt it, okay? You'd be surprised what you can do with just this much time with what we're gonna show. So for example, I can't just, I could do this ad nauseum, okay? There's, but there's 40 of them I can show. Uh, let's just go to last year here really quick. We were able, even able to pull off profitable situations in situations like this last year. People saw me do it live through brokerage, through real executions with real dollars. They saw me do it live, okay? Um, we made a neighborhood of 9% in just these two days, okay? After this explosive day where all these indicators came, in, came into view. We made more money again here, okay? And we just kept doing it. We did it five times last year. We made money on four of them. All five were profitable at one point. One of them came back a little bit uh, more aggressively um, and caught us where, you know, we just couldn't save that campaign. Uh, but it can be done. The main point there is this technique is going to be helping you find the most prolific bottoms and bottom opportunities of a lifetime. It's also has the ability to make money in even one of the toughest years. Uh, that you've seen, at least in recent memory, right? Uh, realizing that, you know, if earnings uh, eventually get crushed here, you know, we've only really begun to see the beginning of the one that we're in now. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's another great bottom fishing opportunity coming and it could be one of a lifetime is what I truly believe. I truly do. I just don't know when it's going to be. The nice thing is we have a systematic way that Every time there's an opportunity, we we take the stab at it, knowing that, you know, that catalyst, when it shows itself, we know that that's going to be the big one, okay? All right, so let's get to this. Let's go back into the slides. And so, guys, I'm riding solo here. I'm not going to be able to answer a lot of questions until uh, we get to the end. I will try to circle back and answer as many as I can, okay? All right, I, I, you know, in this one, they can kind of be showstoppers. We need to keep the content flowing because it takes me plenty of time to get through this content to begin with. And I'm trying to give you as much as I can for free. Uh, so that should actually be applauded <laughs> more, more than screamed at, okay? Uh, so in terms of what to buy, we're gonna buy with stocks with explosive upside potential, okay? And so when we say upside potential, what do, you got, what do some of you guys think that means in terms of indicators we're gonna use, right? We gave, <laughs> it's actually given away right there. Relative value, relative value is gonna be key. Okay, relative value is going to be key. But what we want are double to triple digit gains in days to weeks, not years. Many of you would be happy with a triple digit gain in 10 years right? or 20. <laughs> now, I, I wouldn't say that this is going to move your entire portfolio, although it could. You know, it kind of depends on your situation. But if you start to get more in towards my situation, 
I'm not going to take my entire nest egg and go bottom fishing with it, okay? What I'm going to do is break off about 10, maybe even less percent of it at this point <laughs> and still do really well, uh, you know, with that, just that little amount of capital. But it, it's dictated by your situation, okay? So it can be everything or it can be a fraction or it can be somewhere in between. And for most people, it's probably somewhere in between, okay? So you know, 20% or 10% of your capital or whatever that number is, you'd be surprised, for example, what $100,000 does here. I mean, that that truly can be a life-changing event in and of itself. So you don't need to take your 5 million and to go bottom fishing with it or your 25 million or your 200. We have subscribers with more than that, you know? So it's, you know, you, you do whatever's comfortable here, okay? All right, now, what we're going to do is get away from the traditional approach of only buying stocks we're perfectly happy owning if the market is shut down for 10 years and stop worrying about that like we sure some of us did with covid uh because look they're going to do well they're just not going to do as well as the way that we do it um so this is one of those bottom actually this is 2016 this is the bottom before the presidential election when i showed this one was largely an energy bottom this is the last time energy stocks went on a tear prior to the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, because of that, these were certainly not the right stocks to buy. And so hopefully we all agree. I mean, if you just go down the ticker symbols there, I'll read them to those of you on personal devices. You have Amazon, Facebook, Home Depot, Disney, Visa, Google, Walgreens, Apple, Gilead Sciences. Anybody ever heard of those stocks? right? Well, they went up 9% as a basket. That's, you know, 40% a year annualized rate of return. And the S&P was up more than that. So the, the S&P beat those great stocks in that three month cycle. Okay. So this is what happens. It's actually a good experience because you still got the market bottom, right? We bought the wrong stocks and we only made $1,900 on 20,000. Whereas and to avoid looking like this guy, is which is how you feel, you know, what just happened? I bought the best stocks in the stock market, market market's beaten my performance. What gives, right? Not satisfied. So how do I find the big ones? We have searches for them. And so when you get it right, the same $20,000 turns into 19,000, nearly 100% return on investment in those same three months, right? It's because energy was what to buy. Now, what you're going to find out as we dig a little deeper, even though this was absolutely the right basket of 10 stocks, it is a little risky putting all of your eggs into just the energy basket, <laughs> no matter how right this would have been at that time. But, you know, if you grab them the right ones, there's five of them on that list, almost six that are up more than 100%. You know, and generally speaking, the ones towards the top of the list do better than the ones the further you go down a list. So there's multiple ways that um, you're going to be able to take advantage of getting the right performers of the basket of 10. Even if you only had two, you likely would have had pretty similar result. OK, so here's that same stock. It was from that basket. So let's talk about making the transition then. So I'm going to get over here. I'm going to go low hanging fruit because. You know, it's just easy to show. It's fresh in our memory still. And a situation like this um, is probably coming somewhere down the line here. And it's probably within the next year. Uh, and the reason I would say that is uh, when I said earlier that there have been over 40 market bottoms in the last 20 years, if you do the simple math, you tend to get about two every year. Well, I said there was five last year, but they were pretty small in nature, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so we, we have yet to have the big one. You know, but odds are there's something of pretty good sub substance coming around the corner once all this uh, yuckiness works itself through the system if we survive it. <laughs> but that's the best bottom to buy, see? When you feel like shoving money under your mattress, that's usually, that's when you need to get ready to buy stocks. Okay, so let's come up here to timing here. Uh, I'm sorry, Unisearch and tie this together. Actually, both. Let's go timing first. So we'll take low hanging fruit here, just so that it's fresh in your memory. We could actually do any of these turns really, but um, you know, 
we want to show impact. And since the next really big one could be as good as this at some point, um, you know, here was the March low date buy to sell ratio below. Yep. You know, all of them are, all of the metrics are going to be being hit here. Okay. Buy to sell ratio at this point was actually 0 0.02. So kind of a black swan event. I get that. Uh, MTI 0.25. So really low. It should be a big bottom. And was it? You bet. Does that look like even, so that rubber band analogy, right? So the run here was the best of any of the runs over this shorter amount of time. Um, you know, one could argue that you had a 14 year bull market off the March nine low. And that's also true, <laughs> you know, but over a year on year, it's pretty, very, very strong period here. And, um, and that's, so that's how this works. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is go into Unisearch and we'll run some searches around that time frame. And I'm going to detail a couple of things that are important to be on the lookout for, which would have kept you out of trouble here recently over the past three or four months on making some mistakes, uh, which uh, was uh, was not uh, factored into last year because they I didn't have the same problem. So there's kind of a nice little caveat thing that I'm going to show here in a sec, and I'm actually going to give that away. You guys are lucky today, boy. You're getting some good stuff here. So I'm going to go to Unisearch, though. That was March of 2020, right? March 24th was the actual low, uh, the day off the low, rather, the explosive day. Um, so if we come up here to Unisearch, we go over to March the 24th. This would be a day late and a dollar short, essentially, because the big day is already done, which is fine. Um, oops, 20. I don't mind showing it this way because it's not about trying to show you like the best thing possible. Uh, I'll actually show some more turns if we need to, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, so if I go to March the 24th though, I'm also, you know, not going to show you the, some of the lesser quality ones. That doesn't make any sense. Who does that? <laughs> so <laughs> we want to show you how it can change your life, not how it can give you about 30% returns last year if you did it, you know? which is, hey, 30% returns in a down year. I mean, come on, what are we talking about here? All right, so anyway, 324.20, let's go to searches bottom fishing. Uh, and we'll pick on a couple of old favorites. It's been around VectorVest at any length of time, you'll remember this name, Jailbreak, this is Dr. Delito's favorite. He calls it, and I quote, <laughs> I chuckle every time, the mother of all bottom fishers. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that guy, man. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, let's see. The mother of all bottom fishing searches, I think, is his precise words. All right. Anyway, it's 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 typically the best, guys. And it's typically the best for one reason. The prices on these stocks, these are gonna be the bloodiest stocks in the stock market. There's just there's just no two ways about it. Um and at the same time. You know, given given how how ridiculously beaten down these stocks are going to be, they have at least, you know, and some of them have excellent RV numbers, right? Look at this, two, two, 187, 188. I mean, that's that's not just above one four, which is excellent. That's like it can't go any higher than that, okay? All right. So anyway, um, let's run the search. We got it. Quick test them. Bingo, Bamo! All the way to today, they're up three hundred and thirty-seven percent as a basket. That's twenty stocks. That's okay. I want to show how uh, much breadth this thing has, and uh, and then you can do some fun stuff like sort by total ARR, ROCC. There's that OVV, and this is in a different time frame. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the same one. I said it was up over a thousand percent, right? Well, it went to fifty-five. So it's come back down to 39. All right, now look, you're not gonna hold on to it that long. Greedy little pig, right? You're not gonna be able to stomach it, number two. But uh, let's say we held them for, well, to the confirmed up call, because that's about the time you wanna start peeling, peeling these off and moving in a different direction. All right, so just the confirmed up, this basket of 20 stocks is up 95%. Right, your annualized rate of return now jumps to six thirty three because most of the most of the you know most of the good part of the run was just done in the first three months, right? 
it took the next two plus years to get the next 200%, for example, okay? Um, geez, probably close to three years at this point. So all the heavy lifting is done early here. That's the juicy part. Then you're better off just going back to your Teslas and your micro sausage and your <laughs> and so on, et cetera. All right, let's, oops, let's go back here. Let's do a couple of different things. Let's go to 10 stocks. 88%, nine out of 10, okay. Let's go uh, a day late and another dollar short. 92% in three months. Let's go another day late. So 85%. So we're starting to see some deterioration there. Okay. Now let's be a month late. Twenty-two percent to the same termination date. Okay, so we want to take that out of another month. Fifty-one percent, right? So still, the first three months were better than the second three months, and the second three months will be better than the third three months, and so on, etc. Okay, get the point. Point is, the further away you move from the bottom, the less you're giving away a lot. You're giving away a lot. Some of you are saying, I'll take any of those, man. <laughs> I get it. I get it. All right, let's get back over here. Let's, uh, let's do a different search. Let's talk to you um, from a realistic approach, according to temperament. Some of you are not built to trade these stocks and should run away from them because you, you, you don't have the mental composition to be trading them. Because what you don't see is that at one point, those stocks as a basket were down uh, like 18% before they went up, you know, and could you, would you have stuck with it? Mm. Those kinds of things. So we talk a lot about that. And of course, we're going to be talking about a little later on, but let's go to bottom fishers, uh, buyers, bottom feeders. This is probably our second favorite. Okay. 146%, mm. but that's to June 24th, but you get the point here. I mean, you know, <laughs> now the stocks are of a little bit higher price point and it's actually doing even better. So some of you just a little while ago are saying, well, that sounds great, but I'm not buying dollar stocks. Well, what about now? Will you buy a $6 stock or a $3 stock or a $2 stock or a 25? The 25 one went up 50. The higher the stock price is, the, the lower the ROI is going to go. Unless it's a meme stock and there's no reason. <laughs> it's one of those crazy things. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe that ever happened. Um, it was so fascinating to watch. All right, stay on track, Steve. I've seen that play out like on the individual couple of trading day sessions to see it blown up through social media and watch all this is just crazy. <laughs> just prolongs agony for those folks. All right. So anyway, um, let's, uh, let's kick it up a notch. Let's go to, now you start going, you know, S and P and things like that. You're going to start. So there's an ebb and there's a give and a take, right? There's a give and a take here. So, we're definitely going up the ladder in prices, right? Our relative value is actually coming down. Do you think the S&P 500 stocks were as bloody as the Russell 2000 stocks? Yeah, uh, yes or no? That's a pretty easy answer, right? No, the small caps take it on the chin more than the S&P 500 stocks do. But these are the bloodiest there. All right, you quick test them and they're up 66. That's still pretty darn good. And that's with S&P 500 caliber stocks. You interested yet? You're saying, well, you're going, you know, you're going back and you're taking the easiest time frame. Look, man, <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, yeah, I said that right up front. You know, there's been three of these kinds of opportunities in the last 20 years. Okay. Um, there will be more in the future and this is as good as it gets. And so it's important you have an understanding of where this can lead. If you want to decide on, do I want to learn more or not? What I'm not going to do is show you the weakest performer of the 40. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> so anyway, we'll just kind of knock all that crazy crap off the, off the table here really quick. Um, so yeah, I'm, the thing is though, you can get in here. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, 
take these searches, go back and see, did the market go up from when the trigger was established, right? When did it stop going up? Test that time frame, right? And was there potential profits to be made? It'll blow you away. It'll absolutely blow your mind. Most of you won't do it because it takes time. <laughs> and we don't do anything that takes time anymore. There's probably next to nobody in this room that'll do it. And if you do, I hope you do, because what you're going to find is something that works. Time in, time out, bottom in, bottom out. Okay. Is it perfect? Is it 100%? No. Right? Is it better than 9 out of 10? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. And there are very few odds in all of the stock market that are up in that kind of a, you know, that kind of a spectrum. Very few. All right. Now, there's more though. And I'm actually not going to give away everything in this webcast because, yeah, well, you know, we got a course to sell you. But the reality is the other thing that you want to see here. So this is March the 24th. If we go to the views, and this is what keeps you out of trouble in times like the last few months where none of these bottom fishers really did much of anything except for one. Um, and I can even show that. That might be pretty cool. I think I will. But let me show you this first. Um, there isn't anything going on in this database, I don't know, just for those wondering. But let's go back to, um, that was March 24th, right? 2020. All right, let's see. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to pull, pull up the newsletter on that date. We'll come down here. Bottom fishers. One of them was S&P 500. Okay. We're even starting to see some bottom fishers get off into the five day. When you got um, bottom fishers in the one day and the five day, that is usually a dead giveaway that this is going to be a pretty good bottom. The more you have, uh, the better. So this isn't completely dominated by bottom fishers, um, but the, you know, there's three out of the five in the top and three out of the five in the bottom, four out of the five in the bottom. Okay. So bottom fishers, and look at these percentages guys. So already over the last five days already. So as of the explosive day, these are already moving huge percentages. Granted, if you look at, um, something like correlate one from the top to the bottom. Ah, Russell. So Russell was up 55 over the last five days. Well, 24 of that was just this day, that day, the 24th. So those 10 stocks in Russell 2000 were up 24% that day, 53% over the last five days. They're taken off. Right. And so if you go back to Unisearch, but then it's too late, right? The stocks are already up 55%. That's not the point. The point is they're taking off. <laughs> go back to Unisearch. I, I can't go up any more than that, Steve. <laughs> you can see I've got all kinds like $10, 500,000. So, you know, you can also add prices and volumes and, you know, kind of put focus things more toward to cater it more towards you. But anyway, let's, um, Let's quick test 119% after the 55% that they're already up. 119% after the 55% that they're already up. Okay. Groovy. Anybody, anybody want to learn more now? I hope so. I can't do it any better than that. Okay. So, so I showed you multiple turn multiple times where the market timing has come into play and it's been very useful to get in at those times. I've showed you multiple searches that work well. Uh, and it works, guys, it works. If you're a skeptic, just go test it out. Take the recipe I just gave you and test just that much out. Okay. So I'm going to skip this point. How much do you think buying the right stocks can change things for you? The answer is huge. One of my buddies would say bigly. <laughs> Uh, he's a dodo. All right. So five trading tactics that make you money. Uh, let's get to those because risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Uh, no plan. You end up like this guy. Fortunately, he's got a parachute. 
but in the stock market, if you don't have a plan, you don't even have a parachute, you know? So that's going to lead to a lot of emotional trading, ultimately flushing money down the drain and not doing things right. So uh, we want to do five to 10 stocks per campaign. If you're getting towards the doing this for the very first time, you want to stick more towards 10. It is kind of like a bell curve that remember how you got graded back in college? Well, let me explain the bell curve to you there, Sonny. <laughs> We're going to have to move you more towards the middle because you're a little low. <laughs> so seven or eight stocks typically does about the best. You know, it's has been our experience. Um, I need to redo. I had a lot of empirical data on this from um, ways back uh, where Drew Sands and I, we both used to teach technical analysis course and this and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and we had compiled a lot of testing. Um, and that's what was, was our experience, okay? But somewhere between five and 10 is, is definitely where you wanna be. 20, there's no need. I showed you some 20 stock baskets. You can go there. All it does typically though, is deteriorate your performance. You run the risk if you go five on catching a bad one and not one of the best one ones. So, you know, lean more towards 10, okay? Never risk more than one to 2% of a total portfolio value in any single trade. So, uh, as you saw, some of the stocks in here can be pretty low in price, particularly if things go as bad or worse than we expect that might go for the market here over the next several months. Um, you know, the stock prices can get pretty low, even of really good stocks. So what you don't want to do is get yourself in a position that you don't have a lot of flexibility to get out. So you want to make sure that you're not risking more than one to two percent of the to of your total portfolio value in any trade and you want to make sure that you're not buying two percent of the outstanding shares of any company that's not listed here but those two things are very important mm. okay um so what most people do for this not risk more than one to two percent is you're going to have to reduce your buying power a little bit just to make sure that whatever your stops are at at around about a 20 percent stop loss that you're not putting too much money at risk. And that's total portfolio value. Uh, now, when we say total portfolio value, we mean the bottom fishing portfolio that you're deploying as well, okay? So, like, if you got a $5 million account and you're doing 20 grand, well, you can pretty well gamble the whole thing. <laughs> you want to. <laughs> this is a threshold for people that want to take the 5 million and do it, you know? <laughs> so, all right. Hopefully you get the point. Don't buy more than two stocks per industry. We teach that with the equations and everything, you know, in the course. Uh, don't buy more than two stocks per industry group. Uh, you want to spread your risk out. That way, let's say you buy a bunch of petroleum stocks. Uh, Saudi Arabia comes out and says, well, nope, you know, we are going to flood the market and uh, turn on the taps. You know, it's going to eviscerate you, your performance. So you'll probably still do okay, you know, but not as well as you would have done had you spread your risk around. So I'll give the counterpoint to the all, you know, the whole complete energy basket from earlier. It looked like the right thing to do, right? But what if something like that happened? Yeah, you know, that that's the risk you're running. So you don't want to do that. Hmm. Um, favor ratcheting or trailing stop losses, and they need to be loose. They need to be loose. Yep. I gave you a pretty good number to start looking at, which is around 20. And we like to use Profit Locker Pro, okay? Or Profit Locker. Uh, we'll do the job. We do do some tweaking to to it um, to try to really get those double and triple digit returns. So we're not going to use a 50-15 because you know you can't get a triple digit return with a 50-15. Okay, so you need to massage that a little bit. I can't give away the whole enchilada. I've been instructed not to. Okay, so don't get mad at me. I'm just following orders. Uh, but uh, this is you know the kind of stop loss that even if you have kind of a wild day between your entry and your exit, it tends to not blow you up too much. So we're gonna give these little birdies a lot of room to run, both early on, really up through about the middle of the target. Um, there's plenty of room. As you start getting close to the target, that's when all the ratcheting in occurs. So I'm not gonna belabor all the points there. Um, the other point to make here is if you find yourself Launching a campaign and it doesn't get cooking in the first few days, you typically want to go ahead and shut it down if you haven't already. Most of the time you already would have. Uh, and if you're in a campaign and it's starting to not make money for a couple of weeks, 
right? At that point, you typically want to go ahead and start thinking about shutting things down, right? Then you can move on and start doing your high quality stocks. Now, when you're in a situation where like this, this might be a little premature in this example in that your buy to sell ratio was still below 0.2. <laughs> you know, actually, no, this is 2016. I was thinking it was 2020. Never mind. No. Uh, but you know, if your buy to sell ratio is still below 0.2 when you're <laughs> when you're when you're when you're replacing stocks, go ahead and replace them, you know. As it starts to get up towards one and then starts to go above, that's when you want to stop replacing with bottom fishers. And there's a big reason for that. And the big reason is, you know, if if stocks are still low, like if they're coming up in a jailbreak scan, which is looking for the worst RTs, you know, in the stock market, um, there's a reason why those stocks are still low. You know, it, those aren't, aren't the ones to buy um, because they're just not, you know, participating in any meaningful way. So once you, I, I always say this, once you get to a confirmed up call, you're typically better off buying stocks from other avenues. That just makes it real simple. Okay. Once you get to a confirmed up call, stop replacing your bottom fishers for sure. Um, and uh, start going other directions. Okay. So a lot of great information there. Do you think these trading tactics will help your performance? Do you, does anybody think that this could be useful for you? Even even with just what I taught here, what do you think? <laughs> yes, right, exactly. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, it's great to see so many of you quick on the trigger there. That's cool. All right, good. Okay, so I figure this. I figure you're here today because you want to take advantage of your opportunities in the future. You want to beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. I love this picture even more now that I'm a Bucks fan. You know. But it was, it's, he was at the end, guys. He was at the end, you know. But, boy, you don't get very many opportunities to beat Tom Brady, do you? Okay, confident. You want to be confident. You want to be confident in knowing what you're doing. And ultimately, you want to be able to trust and have faith in your system because your system is what's going to determine that success for you. And it is rather easy. It is one, two, three. When to buy, what to buy, when to sell. All of it was laid out in here with enough clarity that you should know how to take up the ball and run to some degree, there's always more to know. The ability to ask questions, the ability to learn more, and the ability to jump a little deeper into the rabbit hole to get into the fine granular details that do matter at some stage, right? And so we're gonna be talking about, in a course that we're gonna be teaching, making these shifts and doing so with a, even more clarity. But that's moving from uncertainty to precision, moving from ordinary stocks to incredible stocks with upside potential, moving from not knowing when to sell to knowing exactly when to sell and being able to set it up so that all you got to do is click a button and follow the instructions. <laughs> Systematic, right? We're going to show you how you can plug it all into your software so that all you've got to do is click the button and follow the instructions. And then you can either sync that to your broker or not, depending on whether you have RoboTrader or not. But either way, all you got to do is follow the instructions. <laughs> okay, so here's the choice. The choice is do it alone or hopefully not make that many mistakes or you do. So get the guidance to avoid all those mistakes. Five weeks to learn how to do it. Uh, with yours truly and Jerry D'Ambrosio. We are the two that teach this course, okay? Five weeks to learn how to generate explosive profits by nailing bottoms with precision. It's not for everyone. I really mean that. It's not for everyone. You should kind of know already. Some of you are already saying, no, this isn't for me. That's cool. I got no problem with it. You're missing out, you know, that's, but it's real. I mean, it's, for, it's not for everyone, right? Uh, but when you start thinking of it in terms of breaking capital down, I think that's, the, the part that would sway some people who might be sitting on the fence, right? You don't have to do this with your whole nest egg, nor should you, nor do I. You'd be surprised what 10 or 20% of your portfolio can do <laughs> right? on one of these turds. All right, so if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. Old Abe Lincoln uh, said it best. So if you want to know how to do it, do it right. Get yourself in this course. It's that simple. Module one, all about mindset. Module two, how to pinpoint and uh, maximize uh, entry with entries, the right proper entries. Uh, number three, more info and insight on what are the, the searches that are right for you as an individual. Okay. Uh, number four, 
critical money management tactics going a little deeper, given the, the specifics. I know some of you probably had a lot of questions. I can't answer those questions in this webcast, right? They're answered in the course material itself. Uh, number five, your definitive bottom fishing plan. Uh, when to buy, what to buy, when to sell. You can do very well with what you learned in this course, whether you know that right now or not. And when I say this course, I meant your last 45 minutes. Your last 45 minutes has been life-changing whether you know it or not. This will make sure that you are absolutely ready. You know, this will um, give you the confidence that you may or may not have yet that you need. Because all of this looks really easy until you actually hit the go button. <laughs> and if you haven't been this through this course, you are going, I'm not going to say you might make mistakes, you're going to make mistakes. Right? So if you just like quickly scribble down some notes and you think, well, I don't need to do anything now. Yeah, I just, well, you're going to see the value in it, but you're probably going to make a lot of mistakes along the way that you could have avoided. <laughs> so just remember that. Just remember I said that. Just remember I said that. I told you. Just remember. All right, give me six weeks. I'll show you a roadmap to explosive profits. Week number one, secret to precision bottom fishing all the way down here. So this is, guys, this is all up uh, recorded digitally. It was done a few years back. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is not time sensitive information. This is a systematic approach that will remain the same for the next 20 years. It doesn't need to change. There's no reason to change it. Uh, $595 is going to be the price point for this course. Some people have paid $2,000 for this course, and I'm not kidding. They have. Okay, uh, 595 is the current offer. That is a ridiculous amount. Uh, it is a no brainer. You will make more than $500 bottom fishing if you spend the time to actually learn it in this course. There's just no two ways about it. Okay, uh, www.vectorvest.com slash BF. That's the website to go to to get it done. So I'm going to put that out in the chat right now and I'll get to questions here in a sec, guys. I promise. Okay. I'm a man on a mission right now to make sure I give you the best stock market guidance you can get anywhere at any price without interruption, because those tend to be derailers sometimes for, for not careful, okay? All right, so number mastery session. Now, these will be live. So uh, the coursework is all digital, uh, but these will be live. This will be opportunities for you guys to ask individual questions of us on the spot. You know, obviously we don't even know what's coming. We don't care because we will have the answer. Uh, mastery number one, April 18th, 2 p.m. These are Tuesdays at 2, Tuesdays at 2, April 18th, April 25th, and May 2nd. I'm doing at least the first two. Jerry might have to do May 2nd. I'm on vacation. But if he can't, I will still do it. Isn't that wonderful? The abilities we have now from all this COVID stuff where we can do anything we want, anywhere in the world we want, right? Probably could have done that before COVID, but now we know for sure. So uh, I'll, you will get the coaching you deserve, and uh, I will make sure of that. So those three weeks live with Steve or Jerry. Jerry is uh, also more than capable to teach this course, okay? All right, so $5.95 is the final price. I put a link out into the chat. That link will take you to this website here. Uh, oops, sometimes I got to click this twice. I don't know why. Uh, and when I do, uh, you'll see this image here, a little bit more on the um, – on the course itself, you'll see the discount. You'll also see the ability to purchase, um, you know, and so on, and just kind of take it from there. Once purchased, you'll get a whole bunch of emails that'll walk you through all of, you know, getting to the coursework, getting the emails for the masteries, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm gonna take some questions now. Thanks for being patient, guys, and uh, allowing me to uh, get all of this done. Thanks very much for that. You can see it was a challenge, <laughs> even, uh, without uh, without taking questions. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Do I have to wear a cape and a mask to be confident? I hope not, James. <laughs> May I have a telephone number to discuss the possibility of enrolling in the course? Well, you would just call uh, uh, Vector Vest number, 888-658-7638. So I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, let's see. Where is the go button? <laughs> I know, right? I wish we had one. You know them. You know what I meant. Uh, what's elite price? So the go button is uh, is you turn on the genius, okay, Assad? You're gonna turn on the Vectorvest Genius, which is inside Portfolio Manager. That's the go button. Uh, what is elite price? This is the price. That that is the price for everyone. There is no lower price than that one. Nor will there ever be. At least while I'm teaching it, they're gonna have to find some other dude. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> no worries, guys. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, what if I can't attend every session? So uh, again, there you'll have access for at least a year's time, and um, and the mastery sessions will also be recorded. So at least you have the benefit of maybe some more relevant, up to date, current um, banter about the markets and and what we're looking at right now and that kind of stuff too. Uh, so everything's being recorded that wasn't already recorded. Yep. All right. Let's see. Is the nope. Let's see, I bought this course in December, but have yet to do it. Could you let me sit in on the mastery? Um, Rick, shoot me an email. Let's see if I can make that happen for you, okay? There really hasn't been much of a, December 22nd of last year. Yeah, there really hasn't been, um, there really hasn't been much of an opportunity. But I'll see, I'll see if I can finagle something, okay? All right, let's see, besides BSR of 0.2 or less, do you like to use any other TA indicators? Not for this in particular. I use TA indicators all the time in my own trading, okay? Um, but not, not, not in this perspective, no. But I, you know, Jerry and I teach trade like a pro here. We use all kinds of, of indicators that we've, that we've learned. Um, yeah, but not for this, okay? The vector vest indicators are what you need for this, 100%. You can't, you can't, you can't replicate it with the T8, with the tech indicators. It can't be done. All right, let's see. That's, I'm being truthful there. You cannot be, it cannot be done. Okay. You can sit, you can sit there for days trying to figure it out. <laughs> I, so I, I tried to see if I could get close. I couldn't get close. All right. Great stuff, guys. There wasn't a ton of questions here. Um, some general comments couple of wise guys. That's okay. I get it. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're pretty much done. All right, guys. Thanks. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the course. I know a bunch of you already said you're looking forward to it. So that's great to see. I'll see you in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot. I promise. Okay. We'll see you soon. Good luck guys. See you soon. Good luck. Get to that website. It's on the screen right now. Vectorvest.com slash BF. We'll see you soon.